All right, folks, welcome back. If you've watched many of my videos, you've seen me use this scale check weight set. I highly recommend that everybody who reloads get one of these. It's a very quick and easy way to be 100% certain that your scale is not lying to you or giving you false readings right before you're about to do something very important like, you know, weigh out our powder charges and, you know, things like that. So, but the problem with these is that they're very expensive. This set happens to be a Lyman set. Lyman sells a, a set, RCBS sells a set, but you're looking at 40 or 50 bucks. And that's a lot of money, especially when you're, you know, maybe trying to get somebody started as cheaply as possible. And then you're telling them they need to spend 40 or 50 bucks on little pieces of metal. Well, that in comes today's product. This is a tro Tromner, Tromner. I'm gonna go with Tromner. This is a Tromner check weight set. This little case kind of cracks me up. Like it seems oddly, like th it seems like something that would randomly show up from your girlfriend on your bathroom counter. You have no idea what the hell it is or what it does or anything. And you don't really care very much. Like it seems like that sort of thing. Like it's a kit that would like curl or pluck something or whatever, but no, it's, it's check weights. This set, not this exact set, but this set is $20 and eight cents at Amazon. Now this particular set is actually the $29 version, $28 and 89 cents right now. It has got like, first of all, let's, let's pull out our little tweezers. Look at that. Very nice. But this guy has got a, if I can, I think I use these, but there we go. You kind of scoop with them. There we go. This guy has got a 200 grain check weight. It's got a hundred grain check weight. And it's also strangely got a four grain check weight that the, uh, the cheaper kit is missing. But all you need is the cheaper kit. Like the cheaper kit includes a 50, a couple of 20s, a 10, you know, so you get plenty of variety. You get over a hundred grains worth of check weights. So I just bought the bigger kit so I could test the heavier ones just to, you know, just to see, just to test everything they got, you know? But I like this little kit. I think it's going to sit nicely on a bench. There's a little bit of info information about construction here. It says the 200 grain through 10 grain, or if you buy the other one, it would be 50 grain through 10 grain, are 303 stainless steel and weights 5 grain through 0.5 grains are aluminum. That makes sense. Now, I've never been in the uh, scale world or I've never been in any industry where we did much precision measuring, but I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about Trumner. So I figured it was just, you know, a made up name by whatever Chinese company was selling them on Amazon, but no, like, whoa, no, they're in New Jersey. Yeah, they're in freaking New Jersey and they were started in like 1848. Like, look at the picture of this founder. So this is all kind of shocking. A nice kit, handsome packaging and storage, and it is significantly cheaper than what we're getting from the reloading companies. Another kind of, so this, this kind of confused me. This whole kit confuses me. So I looked at some historical pricing information on Amazon and this kit used to be 48, 46. Yeah, like mid forties, upper forties, as far as price goes. And then it took a big drop in price and then a second drop in price right around the beginning of last year, the beginning of 2000, well, right around the beginning of the pandemic. I don't know if that was part of it or what. But yeah, now, like it was 20 bucks forever, and then lately it's been bouncing around a little bit. As I make this video right now, it's $20.08. Now, the bigger kit that I bought used to be in the 80s. So like $83, $84 up to $88. And then it took the same, you know, two big price hits, and it's under 30 bucks now. So I don't really know what happened, but this is awesome for us. I'd never heard of these. Like somebody had mentioned these to me in a previous live stream and they actually they said they had bought them and a couple of them were off so i can't wait to try these i've not even weighed these yet so i'm looking forward to trying them and seeing if they're any good but the first i heard of them was negative and all of this information about being an american company and made in the usa and all that garbage is is new is is new learned information so if you look at the listing it actually calls this a class f test weight set we don't get a certificate, but they're sold as class F. So I had to go out and try and find out what class F meant. And it led me to this document by the NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. This is a pretty old document from 1990, but it defines specifics and tolerances for field standard weights. That's what the class F, it's like field standard weights. 
Now this document covers a lot of ground, but it boils everything down to this equation for us because it says, you know, some of the heavier weights, so like the tolerances are one part in 10,000 for weights, one kilogram or in larger, et cetera. But it gets down to the end where tolerances for weights below 10 grams are determined from the following equation. And all of, all of the weights we're concerned with, except for the 200 grain check weight I got, that's over 10 grams, but whatever. Like this equation should tell us what we're getting ourselves into with class F weights. So I took this equation and tried to do some math in our spreadsheet here. So I converted grains to grams. I ran the equation to find the tolerance in milligrams. And then I converted to find tolerance in grains. Now you'll find like, so our 0.5 grain check weight has a tolerance of 0.005. I just realized, I'm not sure if that's plus or minus five or is that plus or minus, or you know, plus or minus 0.005 or is it plus or minus 0.0025? I'm not really sure, I don't think it matters. The, the, the main takeaway here is that all of these are beyond the resolution of our scale. So all the way up to the 100 grain check weight, I show a tolerance of 0 0.02 grains, 0 0.025. So if we, let's, let's round that up to 0 0.03. Our scale that I'm gonna be testing today and the ones that most reloaders use these days read to 0 0.1 grains. So these test weights, if they are within class F as defined in this book should be perfect as far as we can tell. We don't have the resolution to tell they're not perfect. Now the slightly heavier one, I think it said one in 5,000 was the tolerance. So I ran those numbers for all of these and it's actually a little bit more strict. So our 100 grain check weight, or, or I'm sorry, our 200 grain check weight that doesn't fall within this original formula should be you know, still well within the capabilities of our scale. Now this gets a little bit crazier because we just, we found a class F document, we found our equation and we ran our numbers, but there's a second document. Here is a 2019 update to the same NIST handbook, 105-1, and it's specifications and tolerances for field standard weights. The problem is this document contains jack squat. Apparently this class F designation is being depreciated because what they basically are telling people is the equivalent classes. So like here's NIST class F here in the right-hand column. It's showing these ASTM class and OIML class that are equivalent. So it seems like this class F is a dying thing going away and everything that's important is done with these ASTM or OIML classes. That's my guess. But there's no indication in this document that the, you know, the standard or that this, you know, whatever subclass of these other agencies classifications we happen to fall into, I don't think it would be drastically different than what we calculated from the 1990 document, right? And plus looking at the Amazon history, I think these have been available for several years on Amazon and probably predate this 2019 NIST update, whatever. So we're getting too deep. It's a freaking $20 set of check weights. Give me a break. Who gives a crap? Let's see if they weigh what they're supposed to weigh, right? I just thought this was interesting and it also makes me think back to the big price drop in these. Maybe it's just complete lack of demand for class F products if everybody's going to these other classifications. I don't know, whatever it is, assuming these are any good, this is a big win for us reloaders because it seems like a pretty good American made weight set by a pretty big company that makes big boy weights for important people as well, right? All right, so I wanna use the RCBS Charge Master Lite for these measurements. And I wanna start out with my old test weight set, my Lyman set, just to make sure the scale's not going to lie to us. This scale has been turned on at least 24 hours. Yeah, it was a little bit earlier yesterday. So yeah, like 26 hours, I think. Plenty of time to warm up. This scale has probably become my favorite recently for just its repeatability. And hopefully I'll show you here in just a few minutes. It never freaking lies to you. It always just gets the right number. So here's a 20, 20.0, 20. Here's another 20 to make 40. There's 40. Here's 10 more to make 50. Here's five more to make 55. Here's two more to make 57. Here's two more to make 59. Here's one more to make 60. And here is 0.5 
to make 60.5. So there you go. One take. That's all it took. I promise this is not the 34th take. Or is it? I don't know. Do you trust me? All right, let's see what Tromner does here. Pull over our attractive case. Let's pull off the protective little, like that little, look at that. Pull off our brush. Perhaps we'll brush off our pan very delicately and daintily with our pinky out. My pinky is totally out right now. There we are. Let's make sure we didn't mess up our zero. Let's click zero just in case. Okay, we're good. All right, so there's our, oh, I guess we could dust these off as well. Then we can grab our tweezers. Let's start, uh, yeah, let's start with a 20. 20.0 is what we're hoping for. 20.1. Okay, this is exactly, I think the, the person that told me about these said uh, one of his 20s was heavy or both of his 20s were heavy. Let me, let me go back to my, my own 20. Since I, I re-zeroed the scale and was messing around with the frickin' uh, the little brush like a moron, you know, like that, that wasn't very smart. And it wasn't funny either, you know? Yeah, 20.0. Yep, 20.0. So yeah, my 20 is perfect still, but the Tromner, she's heavy. That's all there is to it. Now what we'll do here in a minute, maybe it's got some remnants of manufacturing oils or coatings or something. I'll grab some like 100%, 99% alcohol and clean off everything from these. Maybe that, cause you know, 0.1 grains is nothing. You guys know that. It's a couple kernels of gunpowder, right? All right, so I'm gonna set this one down here so we know that, that one needs, that one needs a, a cleaning perhaps. Here's the other 20. And that one seems okay. Double check it real quick. All right, that one seems okay. That's good. And here is the 10. 10, oh, it got there in the end, but it was, it was kinda looking a little heavy there for a second. Okay, 10 might be okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here as well. Just because yeah, that makes me think maybe maybe she's a smid, smidgen heavy. Tell you what, let's try the let's try the heavy ones real quick. This is the 50. 50.1. Let's try her again. I'm gonna grab this thing with my fingers, see if I can feel anything. No, not really. But she's definitely heavy. Okay, that goes in the definitely heavy pile. Here is 100 grains. That one looks okay. We'll try it a second time here just to be sure. Looking for 100 and getting 100, okay? The 100 looks okay. And here's our big old, big boy of the 200. If I can get my thingies off of it. There it is, 200. Yeah, that guy, you just gotta, you just gotta grab with your fingers. Second test, right on the money, 200. All right, here's a 5.0. Here is that weirdo 4.0, which you may not have in your kit if you get the cheaper one. That one looks good, 4.0. A little triangle for a 3.0. Looking good. Oh, here's the 2.0. Here's the 1.0. And here is the 0.5. All right, so all of the lighter ones, it's like as soon as we got to the, or the aluminum ones, we were fine. All of our problems were with the heavier stainless steel jobs. Huh, how about that? I'll tell you what, let me grab that alcohol, clean these guys up real quick, just make sure and totally degrease them, and then we'll run through them one more time, see if it helps. All right, everything has been properly degreased. I even messed up the, uh, the ink on my label. That's sad. Okay just to make sure our scale hasn't lost its mind in the last five minutes. Let's go through a couple of my old set. I also degreased these while I had this stuff out. I do that occasionally, you know, just to make sure I get all the 
hand oils and junk off of there. So yeah, scale, scale's looking good. It's still doing its thing. So let's start out with our 10. I forget which one's exactly. I know both of the 20s or one of the 20s had a problem. So our 10 looks okay so far. I think the 10 was okay last time as well. We'll try it one more time just to, okay, what's it doing here? Uh, let's see, I just had to keep trying it until it, uh, we'll, we'll blame the scale on that one maybe. 10.1, 10.0. It must be pretty close to the borderline. Let me try my own 10 from my old kit and we'll see how it goes. 10, zero. 10. All right, mine seems okay. I'll tell you what, we'll zero since we haven't, we haven't zeroed. We'll give that a shot real quick and then try a couple of these. Here's a five. Yep, five looks good. This is from my, my old set. One more, 20. 20 looks good. Okay, back to our new set. Let's try that 10 again. It's kind of rolling around on me. Okay, 10. I think, you know, we're just setting this 10 up for failure, right? Like it's, it's trying to do its thing. It's trying to be 10. Let's move on. Crap. And then of course it says 10.1. Okay. So maybe this one's a slightly heavy 10, just a little bit. All right. Let's move on to the 20. Here's the first one it says 20 and we'll lift up, wait for the scale to go stable, set it down, wait for the scale to go stable. 20. All right. So this, this one seems fine. So it must've been this other 20 that was giving us problems. Yeah, that one immediately just goes 20.1. Okay. Yep, she's a 20.1. That's all there is to it. That's our bad one. This is our 50. 50.1, yep, I seem to remember that's correct. Okay, this time it reads 50.0. There it is, 50.1. You know, this is the one time, like in my YouTube video making thing, where I could have justified buying a laboratory balance that would give me 100% reliable, consistent <laughs> numbers here. And I could have justified that. You know, it's ridiculous to spend, four, you know, what, four, five, six, how much ever money on a... Uh, really nice scale to test out a $20 set of check weights. But I could have justified it in my crazy brain. All right, get off there. There we go. This is the 200. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's let's see how much cumulative error we've got. So there's the 200. Here is the 100. So there, there's 300. Here is the 50. This is the first place I think we're definitely introducing a tenth of error. So let's see if it, yeah, there she goes, 350.1. I think this is our bad 20. So let's see if we go to 370.2. We sure do. Let's uh, want to scooch these over to make a little bit of room. And then of course, I, I might have made things worse. Just kind of going to take a little bit of weight off, put some back on. But yeah, we've definitely picked up at least two, two tenths of error. There's our other 20, 90.2, didn't pick anything up there. Here's our 10, maybe just slightly heavy. Maybe we'll get to a constant three now. Yep, so our, our deduction that the 10 might be just a little bit heavy seems to be bearing out. It's enough to, to bump this guy over from two sometimes, three sometimes, to three all the time. All right, whatever. All right, so that's all of our heavies. That's all of our stainless steel side of things. Three tenths, and it is the, the 10 grainer. It is the 50 grainer, which is right here. And it's one of the 20s. Which one of the 20s is it? I think it's this one. No, I can't remember. Yep, that, all right, it's that 20. Yep, there it is. So we found our three bad pieces, I think, maybe just a smidgen, or maybe it might be because it's off center. 
this scale, I've never really tested it with weight that isn't perfectly centered over the load cell, so maybe that's part of it. But All right, let's move on to the others and see if they have any cumulative error. There's our five. There's our four, so that's nine. Here's our three for 12. Here's our two for 14. There's our one for 15. Well, yep, took that guy a minute, didn't it? Maybe we're a little bit on the, maybe we've, you know, we've just accumulated enough to where we're a little bit on the heavy, but then again, maybe not, you know, like it, it figured itself out there. And then there's the 0.5. So it looks like the smaller aluminum ones are right on the money and the stainless steels just are not. All right, there's five off the scale should be 10.5. It is. There's four off. There's 6.5, here's three off for 3.5, two off for 1.5, one off for 0.5. And we'll give it a break here. We'll move it over here to the center and see if it, see if it gets it. Uh, it switched right at that last second, right before I was picking it up. Yeah, I think the 0.5 is fine. It's just, you know, it's such a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of weight that sometimes it's hard for a scale to pick that up. Now, if I put a, if I put the 5 on there and then did that same dance with the 0.5, it's totally different. Like it picks it up quicker, it picks it up easier. But something about whenever it gets close to zero, it's almost like the scale kind of freaks out. So, am I zero? Am I not zero? Am I, am I, am I, should I be, am, yep, nope. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it here, folks. Let's, let's one more time. Let's look at our bad ones. There's, that's 50. That's a bad one. Here's our 10. That's a bad one. And I think that's our 20. If I can get it to flip over. Is that our bad 20? Nope, this other one might be our bad 20. Let's see if that's our bad 20. Yeah, that's our bad 20. Let's pull it. That's our good 20. Luckily, we did get one good 20. So it seems like we've got three pieces that are one-tenth of a grain off, which is not good. All right, so a little bit disappointed. It's never good to not get what you paid for. I mean, I understand why the price is falling out of these. Like, imagine if you're in industry or something and you're paying for that class F designation from a American company that's been around since 18 dickety two and has a picture of a dude with a freaking kick-ass beard on their website. You know, like you buy that product, you'd think you'd get that product, even if maybe it is a little cheap. So I guess that's it. I mean, I still think this would be a lot better than nothing, but if you're just starting, if, if this was a scale that I took out of the box today, you know, like these two packages showed up at Amazon today and it's like the greatest day ever and I can't wait to get out and test everything. Like which one do I not trust now? Like I know enough about this scale and we've got my old trusty kit that I can trust to where we, you know, we were able to quickly determine which pieces were bad. But if you got one scale and one set of check weights, you're going to be calibrating your scale 400 times and retesting stuff to just keep on chasing your tail probably. So I'd love to hear about your experience. Have you bought this kit? Are you seeing the same thing? Are your problems only with the stainless steel ones with the 10 grain and up pieces? If it is, then, you know, maybe that's what we just need to spread around is, you know, you buy this kit for 20 bucks, you get all of the light, the light guys, except for the four, right? The, the four only comes in this more expensive kit and you wouldn't want to do that. See, how many does that give, give us? That gives us eight, 10, 10. So it gives us 11 and a half grains of check weights that we can be reasonably confident about. Yeah, and now I guess I do. I got one of these guys that's maybe a smidgen heavy, which if I could figure out which one it was on these, these wouldn't be too bad. 
to uh, trim down with a with a razor blade or something. I, I don't know. Can you do that with stainless steel? Like, how freaking hard is this crap? Can I go with that little, like, I don't know, sprue or whatever? Do you call it a sprue <laughs> in metalwork? Or just find an edge and scratch off a little bit until I felt like it was giving me the right number? I think I probably could. Maybe a file would be the smarter way to do it. Or a Dremel with like a hardly any grit polishing sort of thing. I don't know, man. I'll tell you which one I think. I think it's this two. I think it's this freaking two right here. Maybe not. Because right now all I've taken out is the the four and the two. And it started reading right on the... Oh, I guess I took out the five. Let me put the... Or did we have the five in there a second ago? Yeah. All right. Let me throw them all back in there and see if it's still going to read a little bit heavy. No. So let's see, where was I on my conclusion? We need to end this video, right? I hope even, even if you buy a set of these, maybe you go through a little bit of frustration here to gain your confidence in your check weights, right? Just like you're building confidence in your scale, you got to build confidence in your check weights. Maybe this is worth the 20 bucks. I've had other people say, you know, they bought one of the cheap sets in milligrams, which there are some really cheap sets in milligrams. And they just did the conversion to grains themselves and they used that. Or some people have picked a piece of brass or they've picked a bullet or they've picked something or that something around them and they've weighed it and they've memorized it or written it down or whatever. And that's become their check weight. I mean, you know, even if you do something like that, just making sure the same 55 grain bullet reads, reads you know, 55.1 every single day is better than not knowing anything, right? So I think that's where we leave this, folks. It's a slightly disappointing end, but I was kind of expecting it a little bit. Like I said, somebody had already warned me that they had run into this problem. All right, that's it, folks. See you guys next time.